Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. Today is Pentecost. We're going to be talking about wind and fire and spirit. Normally on this day, we would be receiving our confirmands for the rite of confirmation. Know that we're holding our eighth graders in our prayers. We will do this at a later date when we can safely gather. Now let us turn our attention to the worship experience. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning. You created us in your image and you planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the part and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, 
On this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other in the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, uh, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
We're reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the same Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, all of the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is in Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hey kids, I brought a mirror with me today for the children's sermon. I'm pretty sure you have a mirror in your house and I want you to try something later on when you get close to your mirror. I want you to breathe on it and see what happens. <sighs> when we breathe on the mirror, we leave a mark. It's pretty amazing. We really can't see our breath, but it still leaves a mark. We can't control our breath either. It just kind of happens. Think about when you're sleeping. Do you control your breath when you're sleeping? I know I don't control my breath whenever I'm sleeping. You could even try to hold your breath, but eventually, you know what? We just start breathing again. There's a story about creation in the Bible, and it talks about God breathing in to human beings. And it means that God not only did it one time, but God did it over and over again, and that God continues to breathe us, which means the very breath that I have right now is God's. And God's calling me to breathe onto others, to leave my mark onto others, maybe not with my breath, but with the things that I do and the words that I say. So maybe today you can think about sharing kind words with somebody or sharing a loving action with somebody and leaving God's mark on them. I hope you have a great day. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said again to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God breathes us. There's something very comforting about this. Because sometimes I have to remember to breathe, like when I'm frustrated, I just need to calm down when I'm dealing with maybe a difficult situation. Or like when I'm swimming and I'm underwater and I'm desperate for that breath. And then I reach to the surface and I take that big gasp of air. Or maybe it's whenever I'm trying to catch my breath after exercising and having to pause to deeply breathe so that way I can get back to an even place. But, but for the most part, I don't know that I ever really think about breathing because, of course, it just happens. In our seminary class in uh, uh, Old Testament, 
I discovered that creation narrative that God breathes us. It's that continual action. It is not a single occurrence. Not only did God breathe the first breath into humanity, but that second breath as well from humans from within and every breath after, and it never, ever stops. God breathes us. The word breath in Scripture is also the same word that's used for wind and spirit. God gives us the Spirit. The Spirit is within each and every one of us, working in each of us, and we have no control over it as well. And it never stops. Sometimes I have to remember that I am Spirit-filled, so that way I can calm down and deal with the difficulties of life. Sometimes I even long for the Spirit when I'm feeling fearful or when I'm drowning in stress. But when I emerge... I can see how the Spirit was with me the entire time. And if I'm being honest, there's quite a few times that I don't think about it one bit. I move about my life, mostly running on self-propulsion, and inevitably find myself in tough spots, feeling restless and irritable until I remember that simple, simple truth that God breathes me. That God's Spirit is within me. And if I let go and I stop trying to control or just rely on my own energy, I find that that Holy Spirit works through me in the most amazing ways. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, rain down. Fill us again with your divine breath. Move us to share your love and grace with others in everything we say and do. May our words be your words, our actions your actions. We pray this in the name of the one who breathed life into existence, who breathed the Spirit on the disciples, who is breathing us now. Amen. Today is Pentecost, the day we remember the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples as a violent wind and tongues of fire and multiple languages that are spoken and heard. It's the day when that one reader gets the lesson with all the hard words, and Chip did a really good job today. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and the list goes on and on. It's a truly amazing list every year that we hear it, but it's an important list. Because it describes all the different people gathered on that first Pentecost. These people have traveled all across the world and are now in one place. And it's not because they heard the Spirit was going to make an impressive and exciting entrance. These globetrotters have come to celebrate the Festival of Weeks. This is a harvest festival, and it happens seven weeks after the Passover, or 50 days. This celebration commemorates God's giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. And devout Jews, now that are living in the diaspora all over the world, have come together. And this list shows us how diverse they are and how far away they have come. And they speak different languages, and they come from different cultures, and they have different life experiences. And they've all come to celebrate this wheat harvest 50 days after the Passover, remembering the fire and the wind present on the mountain with Moses. And now they're experiencing the fire and the wind of the Spirit that was promised and preached by Jesus. And then when the disciples start to speak in different languages, these people from all over the world understand what they're saying. In fact, the disciples are bearing witness to all nations, to all the world, the power of Christ's resurrection. And it's this breath, this spirit that makes it possible for them to speak and to hear the extraordinary deeds of God in their own language. The good news is heard by everyone in different ways. Pentecost is the beginning of something new. And this seems so relevant today as ever as we are seeking God and serving others in new and different ways. The Spirit has called us to reimagine how we are church beyond sanctuary and steeple. The Spirit has called us to bear witness to others the good news of Christ's resurrection beyond pulpits and pews. The Spirit has empowered us with new and different vehicles and languages to share it, and people from different cities 
different backgrounds and different cultures are experiencing it. God is breathing us, filling us with the Holy Spirit each and every quarantine day. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus breathes on the disciples that are gathered behind locked doors in their own quarantine, and he looks at them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. It might feel to us like a, a violent rushing wind, but it could also feel like that still small breath so close by. It's in us. It's calling us. It's breathing us. And Jesus is saying to us today, receive the Holy Spirit, abiding presence. The Spirit frees us from just trying to do it all on our own. The Spirit empowers us to do things we never thought possible. The Spirit liberates us from old mindsets to new ways of seeking God and serving others, which means that Every word that we speak floats on God's Spirit-filled breath. That every service that's offered is powered by God's Spirit-filled bodies. So take a deep breath, abiding presence. That's Pentecost air in your lungs. That is the Holy Spirit moving in and through you right now. And God is breathing us. Pentecost is the beginning of something new, and I know that we're never going to be the same, and I give thanks to God for that. Amen.
us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the globe, for our own congregation, and for everyone who searches for you. We pray, come Holy Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. For your earth, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on legislators and on judges, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Send healing to those we name aloud or in our hearts. For all who are in need, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Restore to health those who have contracted the virus. Uphold health care workers. Grant jobs to those who are unemployed. And assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. For all who are confronting the virus, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for their future. For our graduates, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Show our nation and our churches how to connect with those whose language we cannot speak. For the speakers of every language under the sun, we pray, come Holy Spirit. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us ways during this time to share with one another the faithfulness we receive from you. Surprise us with unexpected grace. For family members and friends, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Hear also the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Receive our praise for all who for centuries have gone before us in the faith, from the first Pentecost, throughout Christian history, and up to this week. That at the end, we and all the saints will rejoice in your presence, we pray, come Holy Spirit. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Would you please share Christ's peace with those around you? Send someone a text or give someone a call saying, peace be with you.
Last week and this week, we listened to Jesus talk to his disciples, telling them to stay. He wanted them to stay to receive the blessing that is coming. You are having to stay home right now, but no matter where you are, God breathes you. And that breath is the Holy Spirit, and it's what connects us, breathing together. So even if we can't come to church, we can be the church. Your continued generosity helps this happen. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life as we use each blessing for service in your name and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
We continue with the thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the, we the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.